Charlotte the Wit went to go play in Italy, right? And she didn't really post. I didn't think she posted about it on her Instagram. I don't know. I haven't really checked her Instagram in a while, but I'm pretty sure it seems like a lot of people are DJing and playing out in these events, isn't it? Right? That they're throwing it, it's for the most part in Switzerland, where I guess nightclubs and bars have reopened because you know a lot of big DJs have been playing there in actual nightclubs, and then you've got the open air events in France, Possession, Paris that little possession paris techno collective that i mentioned previously another show and then you've got this other crew of people doing shows it feels like in the south along the coast of italy right uh places like bergamo uh places like taranto in, uh, in bari right they're doing loads of stuff around i'm not sure because those places are you know mostly populated by older folk maybe because they're not a lot of people that live there in general or maybe because they've got loads of open space i don't know but it seems like they're doing a lot of events over there and um i'm I don't really care. I don't know, man. I think we already, we, we know the risks involved with this virus. We know that, you know, for the most part, it does uh, spread a lot quicker within places where people are perspirating and dancing and shouting a lot, which happens to be raves and, you know, outdoor music events. So we know that's probably not a good idea to go and do these things. But we also know in the countries that they've been hard hit at, they really do need um, tourism. They need a, an ability to make money, generate some income, allow their local economy to survive or at least make it through until next year. So the only way to do that is to restart things, isn't it? To get clubs and bars and all these things open, large gathering places where people can come and spend a lot of money. So the governments in those countries, I don't blame them for giving the promoters a bit of encouragement, giving them a bit of a nudge and saying, hey, invite your favourite artists to come down. We'll maybe give them subsidise a little bit of the cost of the, of, the, of the booking fee, maybe cover the flights, whatever it may be, or the or the ground travel. Is it ground travel? Is it the ground? Whatever that term is called, right? Um, I don't blame them for doing so because, hey, like we're living in in really unprecedented times but there needs to be uh there needs to be some sort of way to get us back to some kind of normality and allow people to get allow people to basically keep a roof over their heads that's the most important thing because it seems like most people haven't really dealt with the lockdown or really addressed it in the right way in the beginning mm -hmm. and everyone's sort of paying the price and sort of trying to you know scramble to get things back in order where they need to be but the shot of the wit event i'm not going to be again she's not my favorite dj i would kind of you know she'd be the last person i'd go see or break my quarantine for but the event itself didn't look too bad and this is a uh, business techno talking about it on twitter on twitter sorry it's a really funny page to follow and if you're um, interested about all the outrage that goes on, on techno twitter they basically cover all that stuff and again i, I don't really mind her playing there i think if the if the local if the local community or the local government said it's a good idea and you can go why not air looks fun as fuck to be honest as well it's in these weird little kind of um coliseum -y type things is that what it's called i'm not sure they look really cool but there's so many people man it's just ugh. that's the thing italy has some of the best techno fans in the world right maybe the best techno fans in the world i really do think that for all the kind of stick italians get um on forums and stuff about being loud and you know boisterous and stuff they're really at the moment they're so basically single-handedly supporting their careers or the lifestyles or you know giving djs the ability to pay their mortgages put their kids through school during these unprecedented times without italian fans the entire scene it feels like would have maybe crumbled within itself right for the most part if you think about it like these guys are booking mad amount of people mostly all the big guys don't get me wrong they're not trying to break any new artists but they're booking people giving them an ability to make some money play in front of a really captive audience give the people that live there an opportunity to basically unplug unwind you know dance a bit have a bit of a smoke drink some champagne drink, uh, you know smoke copious amounts of cigarettes and do other stuff and just have a good time and i'm not really i can't really be against that to be honest because that looks fun even for a shot at the weight of it that looks pretty cool So many that like, they love that and it's packing up packing right in around the dj staring at them like it's a really different crowd isn't it it's a very different crowd to like um let me move on for that it's a really different crowd to like a you know one that you'd see maybe in london or in berlin or even in paris if you look at some of those possession paris events right they really like they kind of look at djs as like 
an artist, like they're going to go see the killers or something, right? They're right up against the barricades, staring at them, trying to get their attention, looking, pointing to their flags, writing signs and stuff. It's interesting, isn't it? Where to kind of approach it. Whereas in the UK or in Berlin for the most part, people are just like, you know, they got their backs to the DJ and they're just like going ham. Obviously they're going to give them some love, but for most of the thing, they just, they don't care about being seen. They want to just dance and have a good time and let themselves go. But I think for some DJs who like that kind of, um, acknowledgement from the people that are listening to you or coming to see you dance i think it maybe is a good thing um but yeah italians are single-handedly keeping the scene alive it feels like they book and and what well, and uh and swiss people they're booking all your favorite artists um getting them to play in amazing venues uh with a great captive crowd what's the place called this is here from someone's instagram it says uh chlorophylla chlorophylla there she is again but the only thing I don't like about these things, just to kind of pause it, is the prominence of bloody smartphones. Italians love a good recording. They love uploading a shitty piece of video to their online social media platforms, you know, when they could just be enjoying and having a good time. You know, it's even worse at the tech house events because there's literally no dancing. It's just people just standing there staring at people. It's just, it must be a bit disconcerting if you're a DJ because you never really get a feel. You only get a feel of how you're doing in front of an Italian crowd when the bass drops, it feels like, especially at tech house events. But the techno events and this one, it seems like people are really did dance but i don't like the prevalence of the of the smartphones but you know it's part of their thing and it's what they do as a culture what can you do dc 10 is a good example of that as well it's always phones and camera lights and people singing pretty <laughs> shallow you have to smile like that man they fucking love techno down there, man. It's fucking awesome. Nice and cool. All these build ups. I can't be wrong, it's too long, man. Too many fucking build ups. That's the only thing I don't. The, you know, she's again prominent, you know, pretty decent DJ, I guess, for the most part, but it's just all so samey, isn't it? It's just like, it's not really a vibe. Bang after bang after banger, no real kind of progression in tempo or in feeling. Maybe a little bit better than the Melee Lens, but it's all a bit like, you know, flip a coin, you know, no real big difference in terms of how they DJ. But as an event, that looks fairly fun, fairly interesting. You know, they've got the stage up there. Uh, they've got like a big rectangle that basically pushes everybody back, I guess, two meters. Um, some great monitors on either side so you can actually hear what you're playing. And then they've got everyone sort of crowded around her, like sort of like in an auditorium. It looks amazing, to be honest, production wise. Again, like, Italians, I guess, like I said, the best fans out there. And then Nina Kravitz played there too. So I'm not sure if they're purposely not posting it on their socials because they don't want to get some backlash from the techno Twitter crowd or they just forgot to. But a lot of people have been going out, man. It hasn't just been... Um, who did, who was getting the blame the other day? Emily Lenz in it for going to Possession Paris. And, oh, the Paris was a big one because we've just installed the lockdown here, quarantine lockdown for UK citizens that go to Paris or go to France for us, actually. If you do go uh, past Saturday, you're going to have to quarantine for 14 days when you come back to England. So the next Possession paris techno rave i think it's happening next saturday on the 22nd or something so it's gonna be interesting who decides to go and how that kind of how that sort of gets um how people react to it on social and stuff when they find out that you know there is you know a huge spike in numbers of cases in france and stuff so it's not you know and i think i saw a report saying that they've actually blamed young people i think the w the world health organization again you can you know whatever you think about it and put it to one side but i think they said part of the reason why there's been spikes lately has been, been because of the prevalence of young people gathering you know in in groups and stuff and dancing and hanging out in public spaces or going to illegal raves or whatever it may be but anyway this is nina kravitz uh djing in a really ugly dress it's probably a, a really good designer dress but i don't really like it that's not really flattering for her but hey one of my favorites actually Look at the crowd, look, they're just staring, they just stand there staring. They're very captive, they're calm, they pay their money, they buy their drinks, but god damn it, man, they don't dance, do they? Look, they just stand and stare. Very interesting. But again, one of the best crowds, I love to play for an Italian crowd. I think it'll be fucking vibes, but it's like they're watching a band play, innit? They're just like mesmerized by that Vampire Weekend. Very interesting, man. Very, very, very interesting. Um, another one. This is a bit more... Temper, Nina Kravitz, 
Doing her Nina Kravitz dance. We've had the decks. And the crowd going a bit more crazy. Maybe night time, it feels like. Maybe daytime, they're chilling out. That's cool. Okay. A bit, a bit better there for that regard, but still. Uh, not the most captive audience. And then you've got another guy that went to go play, Ilario Alicante. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming Ilario Alicante is another one of these, like, we are, we are minimal recovering type people, right? I'm assuming. I don't, I don't really know. I'm not really kind of familiar with Ilario Alicante. Alicante, sorry. Alicante. Um, so this is, uh, everyone's in black, isn't it? Black everywhere, sunglasses, skin fades, uh, cool tattoos. It's a very particular scene, like you could, you know, no one that attends Grease Mula on the on a regular basis or prior to when it was open would ever see themselves going to something like this, isn't it? It's a very particular, like, but that's what I love about it. I love that techno has this ability, or dance music in general. You have this ability to whatever you're into, you can kind of find an artist or a scene that kind of caters to it. Um, that's why sometimes I think the debate around racial representation in dance music can get a little bit, uh, can be a little bit skewed. And a little bit incorrect sometimes in its approach because if you're just looking at Charlotte the Wit, Nina Kravitz, and you're saying these guys are business techno and they're somehow indicative of the lack of diversity in the scene, I don't think it's accurate because they do cater to a certain audience, right? And I don't necessarily think this audience is going to be that captive or that receptive to like Honey Dijon. Maybe that's not a good example. Yeah, maybe it is. Yeah, I don't think Honey Dijon is going to be their favorite artist, right? They're into a particular kind of person, like a green velvet, for instance, right? Uh, I don't know who else I can make, I can mention, like a Ben Clock. Those, they, they occupy a different sort of space in dance music or in techno. They're not really, you know, you shouldn't be trying to compete with gigs with a Ben Clock or something because, you know, he's just going to destroy you because he has a little bit more of a, I guess, a generic or a general public general public ugh, general public appeal i'm not too sure but i don't know i just thought about it so, you know the, the the guys i've seen at Kit Kat or the people i've seen at like uh same heads they would never be at an event like this but hey. i don't know what's worse this or edm again this looks like fun i'd actually want to go but oh they're actually dancing for once that's good because the other ones that people are dancing, there's a lot of lads in it. God damn it, man. If you want a boyfriend, go to Italy. And then here, of course, a selection of lads hanging out, having a good time. Loads of, um, what you call it? Loads of drinking of the, what's that, Dom Perignon? Ooh, there we go. Expensive taste, my friend. Another video looking down. That's pretty cool from the back of the DJ booth. That looks like fun. I'm speaking on the microphone. Okay, they're dancing a bit more now. Yeah, that's really fun. It's a bit of a forest. That looks like a bloody fun venue, to be honest. Anyway. More videos at all. Everyone recording on their phones, of course. People trying to big friend behind a DJ booth. Oh, that's a good song. I don't know what that is, though. What is that? Let's play that one again. I don't know what that is, but that sounds hard. Okay. Hey, uh, so yeah, Nina Kravitz is bloody amazing. I'm not sure if you'd call this tech house, but wherever it is, it's fucking gorgeous. Look at people dancing, some dancing here. That's good to see. At last, great production as it is anyway, man. It's not just some shitty thing where they put a couple of active monitors in a forest and just, you know, charge over overcharge people for, you know, essentially a forest rig. This looks like they went to some level of effort. A whole rig there, lighting and sound. Bloody hell, they went ham. And then we've got a couple more videos to end it, showcasing why Italians are the best techno fans in the world. Um, I think again, I think they get a bad rap, but they do occupy a certain space in dance music and i think most djs are really excited when they go and play in italy i guess it's probably two for this either you go play somewhere where it's completely dead crowd they're just all they're smoking hookah staring at you yeah it's kind of giving you the, the, the mean mugging you like an episode of gomorrah or it's really captive audience where everyone's just losing their minds right they've, they've, they've saved all month they saved all week 
uh, to get on it and kind of see you play and they're really, really eager to see you do your business behind the deck. So it probably is uh, those two extremes. Now look at these. Look at how loudly they're screaming. Nina Kravitz what speaking Italian. Okay? What's she saying? That's my last song. Bloody hell. That's nice. <laughs> she can speak Italian. She plays good music. She takes pictures of her bathtub, semi-naked. Triggers Maxioplex. What not can you what what can you not like about this woman, eh? Everyone likes that tune, it seems that's a nice song. Yeah, the best fans are. Look how loud they are. So many of them packed in. They cheer bass lines, they sing along to bass lines sometimes. Oh, I miss DJing so much. Damn it. Move on that one, a couple more, and then we'll move on to another topic. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Nina Kravitz is hard. That's what I'm saying. How can you hate me for not liking Start the Wet when you've got a Nina Kravitz that have occupies that space too? How can you if I have to choose a business techno female to follow, it's Nina Kravitz all day long, mate. Absolutely boss. Another one. I hate that dress though. There you go. Teasing the audience. Uh, same track again. Bloody hell. I, th I guess it's something from her label, I'm assuming. Because she's banging out playing that one. Got a cigarette in hand here. Is it going to play? Nope. Probably not. Anyway, let's move on. But yeah, loads of events are happening. Um, give people the time to do their thing. I, I don't really begrudge them for trying to make something happen. It is what it is, and we're living in uncertain times. I can definitely understand the need to unwind, unplug, and kind of do some other things, especially during these times, isn't it? 